uh, greetings everyone in this video tutorial we will talk about arrays in c++ and especially searching in the arrays what is searching searching refers to the operation of finding the location of desired item or data in the array so if we are looking if array is given to us and we just want to find out whether an item which we are looking for is present in the array or not we perform the search operation there are basically two types of searching techniques linear search and binary search now let us see what is linear search it is a method of traversing an array sequentially to locate the target value so in this method we go to each and every element of the array to locate the target value and if it is fine we return the location linear search can be performed on both sorted and unsorted arrays now let us write a c++ program to implement linear linear search and uh, this we are writing a function to perform linear search and the function returns the location of the item if the item is found and otherwise it will return minus 1 so here we look at the program we have included two header files iostream.h and conio.h this is a global variable max of constant integer type and it has value 8 and then this is the linear search function now first we'll go to main because the execution always starts from main so we'll come to main so you see here uh, an array is declared of size 8 and the six elements of it are already initialized like this and n is the number of elements present in the array which is 6 and lock is a variable which is going to hold the value returned by the function linear search and the beginning it is initialized to minus 1 because minus 1 is not an index number of the array the index number starts from 0 so we can assign any negative value to it which is not the index number then data is a data element which we are looking for in the array now we are clearing the screen here and here uh, we are calling the function linear search in this you can see we are passing three parameters num is the name of the array n is the total number of elements present in the array and data is the data which we are looking for so this function linear search will be called and you can see here again the array a is here which points to the array num only n is the total number of elements present in the array and item is the value of the data item which we are looking for in the array so in this a loop will be executed since we have already discussed that linear search is performed sequentially we go to each and every element of the array one by one to see the location of the to see the presence of the array item so we we'll, uh, use a loop and the loop will run from 0 till n and uh, we will check whether the element which is present in the array is equal to the item which we are looking for or not if it is same then we will return the index number where the item is present and otherwise we will return minus 1 so log will receive either the index number if the element is found and it will receive minus 1 if the element is not found So we'll check the value of log. If it is minus one, it means element is not found. Otherwise, it is present at the location log, and we can say the position log plus one because uh, the location starts from zero. So position is we start counting from one. So this will be the position in the array. So we'll see the memory diagram of it. If we will see the memory diagram, it is divided into three parts: global variables, main, and linear search. you can see here we have uh, declared one global variable max which has value 8 and then uh, we have declared an array num of size 8 and it is initialized by six initial values which are here and you can see that this array is not sorted and is the total number of elements which is 6 and data which we are looking for is 80 here this is 80 this is not 40 and uh, the linear search function you can see the formal parameters a is the array which will point to num only then n and capital n they are sharing the same memory space because this is passed by reference and uh, item is an uh, item contains the value 80 which is the value of data 80 now if we look at the memory diagram of how this loop actually functions so we will see here the way we are looking for data 80 which we are searching in this array so in the beginning this is an array which has eight a uh, total number of elements and the first six elements are filled and they are not in the sorted array you can see here now uh, i is equal to 0 in the beginning and uh, this is this condition is true because 0 is less than n and n is 6 here 
so ns5 here sorry and uh, ns6 here so i is less than n so ai is uh, 90 90 is not equal to 80 so this condition is not true so we'll come here and again we will jump to this update statement i plus plus i is 1 now i will become 1 again 1 is less than n and uh, again it will check ai now is 30 you can see here ai a1 is 30 30 is not equal to 80 again the condition is false so we'll jump to update statement i will be incremented and i will become 2 now again uh, you can see here i2 is 10 10 is not equal to 80 so again the condition is false and i will be incremented again uh, now i is 3 and 3 is also less than m so we'll check this condition uh, 3 is what 70 you can see here a3 is 70 70 is not equal to 80 so this condition is again false we'll again increment i so i will become 4 4 is again less than n so we will check here a4 is equal to data a4 is 80 and data is also 80 so now we can see that condition is true and it will return i just 4 and if by chance the element is not present in the array then minus 1 will be returned you can see how this loop actually functions very important to understand when we analyze linear research we find that this method is easy to implement and it is very efficient to use only for small arrays but it is very time consuming for long arrays why this is because if the element which we are looking for is present in the beginning of the array less number of comparisons are needed you can see here if it is present here in the beginning less number of comparisons are needed but as we go down if the element is present down the number of comparisons increase you can see here even for searching 80 so many comparisons are needed so it is written the same thing here if the element is present at the end of the array in the near the end of the array the number of comparisons is equal to the number of elements in the array and this is a this becomes costly then Now let us see what is binary search in the array. Binary search can be performed only on sorted array. This is a prerequisite condition for performing the binary search. If the array is not sorted, we need to sort the array before performing the binary search. It uses the divide and conquer method. Let us see what exactly this is. It repeatedly divides the array into two parts. The binary search method divides the array into two parts. It checks for the required value in the middle and if the value is not found, it refocuses on the part that could contain the target value. We divide the array into two parts. If the value is found in present in the middle, then it is okay. And if it is not present, we will see the either the upper part or the lower part. And uh, uh, this is how this is performed. And this we will see in detail in the program of binary search. And uh, we perform binary search in daily life, like uh, while looking for a word in a dictionary. So you can uh, see obviously if you perform a linear search while looking for a word in a dictionary, this will take a long time, and sometimes it is not at all feasible. So while searching for a word in a dictionary, we always use a binary search method. <coughs> now let us see a C++ program to perform a binary search. In this we are writing a function to perform the binary search of the array. And the function returns the location of the item if the item is found and otherwise it will return minus 1. So you can see here that we have included two files iostream.h and conio.h again the same. Conio.h is for clear screen and get ch. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I am uh, declaring a global variable max which has value 6. This is the binary search function. So let us first come to main. In main I have declared an array num of size max and we have initialized it by these values then the total number of elements is 6 then index is a variable which is accepting the value returned by binary search and data is the element which we are looking for in this array so we are clearing the screen and here we are calling the function binary search and we are passing num n and data so num is the array again n is the number of elements and data is the data which we are looking for so we come here a is an array which points to num, n is the total number of elements and item is the is the 60 here which we are looking for in this array. We declare three variables beginning, mid and last. Here beginning we will initialize beginning by value 0 and last by value n minus 1. We will perform this loop unless or until beginning is less than last. 
every time when this loop executes we will calculate mid which is beginning plus last divided by 2 this is the integer division please note down this if the item is found in the middle in this uh, index mid then we return this mid and else if the item is greater than a mid then we will make beginning equal to mid plus 1 otherwise we will make last equal to mid minus 1 and we will return minus 1 in this in, in a case in which this loop uh, executes fully and and this mid value is not found so if the index is returned here if the index is minus 1 element is not found and if it is if it contains the location we will display the element is found at this index and again the limitations we have already dis discussed that it should be performed only on sorted arrays this is the memory diagram again you can see it is divided into three parts global variables main and binary search global variable we are declaring a variable max of size 6 and in this we are declaring num which has a which is initialized by six elements and n is the total number of elements which are present in the array which is six here and data contains 60 which the element which we are searching in the array then in the binary search a is an array and uh, it is of type num and again n and capital n they are sharing the same memory space an item is the item which we are looking for in this array now let us see how binary search is actually performed. We are considering two cases here. In the first case, uh, we are searching 60. So n is 6. Beginning as we have already discussed, we will start with beginning equal to 0. And last, n is 6. The total number of elements is 6. The last will be 5. Now in the beginning, uh, we uh, look at this loop. Beginning is less than equal to last. So beginning is 0 and last is 5. The condition is true. Now we will calculate <coughs> beginning plus last divided by 2. So 0 plus 5 divided by 2 which is uh, you just please note down that this is always an integer division. So 2.5 will become 2. This is a complete integer division. So this will be 2 and uh, mid is equal to 2 here. Now you can see a mid is 30 and 30 is less than item. Item is 60. So uh, we are, in this case we were looking for the complete array. If a, now in this case we can see that uh, this condition is not true so we will check this condition item is greater than mid yes the item is greater than mid greater than a mid item is 60 and a mid is 30 so in this case beginning is equal to mid plus 1 so we will make beginning equal to mid plus 1 or mid is 2 so beginning will become 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 so you can see here beginning is 3 and last will remain the same last will remain 5 only again we will go to this loop and now we, we will again calculate mid now beginning is 3 and last is 5 so 3 plus 5 is 8 8 divided by 2 is 4 so we will again check what is a4 a4 is 50 is item equal to a mid no we are looking for 60 so this is again false now again check if item is greater than a mid item is 60 and uh, a mid is 50. So yes, the condition is true. So again, we will change beginning this time. Beginning is equal to mid plus 1. So mid is 4. So beginning will become big, uh, will become 5. So, and the last will remain the same. So beginning is 5. Last is 5. Mid will automatically 5. So this is now we are, our search is confined to this. And you can see in this case, A mid is equal to item. So the uh, data is found and we will return mid so once again you will see in the beginning our search was the entire array and in the second case our search is limited to only this portion which is the portion below the mid value of this array and uh, uh, in the next case our search is, lo uh, is localized to only this area so every time we are reducing the area of our search so you can see this element is present in the end and if we perform the linear search it, it will take six comparisons but in the case of uh, binary search, only three comparisons are needed. Now, let us search in item 10, another case. So, in this again, the beginning is 0, last is 5. So, we calculate uh, mid, mid will become 2. And if we calculate A mid is greater than item, A mid is 30. 30 is greater than item, yes, because item is 10. So, this condition is, uh, item is not greater than, those. so this condition is false and we will come to this condition in which last is equal to mid minus 1. So in this case beginning will not be changed only last will be changed. We can see here beginning will remain 0 
and last will become mid minus 1. Mid is 2, so last will become 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. So again, we will calculate, we will come here. The condition is true, beginning is less than last. Beginning is 0 and last is 1. And mid is equal to beginning plus last divided by 2. So 0 plus 1 divided by 2 is nothing but 1. So, uh, is, 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 uh, sorry, 0 plus 1 and 1 upon 2 is nothing but 0. So you can see that mid is 0 and A mid is nothing but 10. So A mid is equal to item. So this condition is true and we will return mid which is 0 because the element is present at 0. We can see that uh, for performing the this binary search, two comparisons are needed. So this is all for this video. If you like this video, kindly give the thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.